Hello and welcome to Villa Susacot, a uh, French Grand Prix here. I'm here with uh, Stephen Frossard. Home round for you, Stephen. Is this something you've been looking forward to on the calendar? Yeah, I'm very happy to, to be here in front of the uh, French public. It's very nice to, to ride in front uh, of uh, every French people. So it's, uh, I, try, I will try to, to make my best and uh, make a good start. And after we will see what's happened. This track here hasn't been on the calendar th since 1998, I think. So in terms of being a French rider, you're not really at an advantage because not many people know the circuit. I was there in 98, uh, yes, full of a GP, yes. And uh, yeah, but they changed uh, completely the track yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and I ride in French Championship eight, eight years ago. So yeah, yeah, the track is nice. Okay, well, best of luck. Thanks, Stephen. I want to have a few words with Tyler Ratcher. I know he's actually racing uh, for a French team. Tyler, uh, just a quick word. Um, are your mechanics egging you on? I know being a French team, do you feel like they're really giving you that extra support being here at a front French Grand Prix? Yeah, it's always good uh, coming to France. You know, I've uh, raced uh, a lot of races in my career, and um, it's always good to come back and see the French car. They really get into it, and uh, you know, being on a French team, it's a uh, home GP for them. So. Yeah. You know, looking forward to racing, qualifying, time qualifying when good, and just got to get off to a good start and try to get my Kawasaki up front. And how's your dry sense of humour uh, fitting into the French team? Is it, is it, are you settling in okay? Yeah, no, no, everything's been going good. You know, everyone on the team works really hard, and um, you know they want to, they want to win. You know, they've won races before, and uh, they want to keep that, uh, you know, that motto. So, yeah. you know, looking forward to you know getting out there and uh, having a solid qualifying race. Practice a bit earlier. How was that? Yeah, it was good. Um, I qualified fifth in, uh, in time qualifying, so yeah, good to look forward to the race now. It's, it's important to get a good start, you know, it's very one-lined and uh, the roost hurts really bad, so <laughs> a good start's uh, definitely going to help. Good luck, Tyler. Tyler, thank you. Uh, time for the MXGP qualifying. Oh, Tyler Rattray on the Monster Energy Kawasaki was fifth in time practice, less than a second behind our pace sitter, that man there, Gertje Paul and Team HRC. De Salle was second, but he did crash towards the end of the time training session, as did Evgeny Bobrashev, who came home in fourth behind Roman Fevre. De Salle just having one or two last minute words as the riders just going through their routines prior to their qualifying race. Gertje Paul and though, the darling of the French crowd, but there's also a, a new hero in town in the form of Roman Fevre. His speed in the last couple of Grand Prix in Spain and Matley Basin one week ago. Really getting himself in the mood here as well. They see just going through the stretching routine. Gauthier gotcha, Paulant on board. The gate dropped and it looked like Max Nagel as he charged down into turn one to sell up the inside. Cairoli there as well. But out of nowhere, it was Fevre who forced his way down the inside of Commander Sal, pushed the Suzuki rider wide. Paulan getting pushed back to fifth behind the fish tailing number 28, Tyler Rattray, as Nagel tried to sneak through up the inside. But it was Fevre who led uphill for the first time on the Yamaha factory machine. De Sal was second. Cairoli was a little bit further back. De Sal had already had a problem here. So too go Che Paulan, who stalled as he landed. Got it fired into life two or three kicks later and rejoined the pack. But Commander Sal suffering with a slight shoulder injury, trying to ride through the pain barrier. But then it got worse for the Rockstar Energy Suzuki rider. At the end of the straight, as Paul and went through, another rider collided with the Sal in the form of uh, Nick Oban. And you can see the Sal picking himself up, holding that right shoulder. That's the last thing he needs. The Belgian sit in second in the World Championship standings, four points off of Max Nagel. Tyler Rattray got it spectacularly wrong though. Freshly watered track, catching out. The Kawasaki rider, he landed, the back end came around on him and threw him down. He banged his elbow, banged his hip. He was able to walk away and we will see him on the line for Sunday's race. Roma Fevre pulling clear of Evgeny Bobrashev on his factory Yamaha. The Russian on the HRC Honda, Kai Rowley was third on the Red Bull KTM and Van Horbeek and Paul and charging back through the field after that stall at the end of the first lap. He got Nagel and Kai Rowley in his sights as well. Van Horbeek found his way up the inside of Nagel through the rhythm section. 
Paul Ant looked to follow as well as the front end came up a little bit too high and that Red Bull Ice one Husqvarna of the German, Nagel. Kai Rowley minding his own business, but then Paul Ant from out of nowhere found his way past the Sicilian and number 89, Van Horbeek also went through as the Frenchman and the Belgian were having their own little battle. Kai Rowley had no answer at that stage of the race. Sean Simpson, number 24, on the Hitachi Revo KTM, was well placed in seventh position and matching the riders ahead of him in terms of speed and lap times. Stephen Frossard launching it down the hill on his Wilvo Fort Rent KTM, having one of his better rides of the season so far. He was in ninth place. Kenda Dijker as well, also having a good ride on his Red Bull KTM. He was sitting there inside the top ten as well and would eventually charge home to fifth. Roma Fevre couldn't do anything wrong, it seemed. The two HRC Hondas were soon locked in a battle, led by Bobrashev. But it wasn't long before Paul Ant had found his way past his teammate and was into second, but could do nothing about his fellow countrymen on the Yamaha, Roman Fevre. Van Horbeek having a great ride in fourth. As the die cut was fifth, Nagel sixth, Simpson pretty much stayed seventh throughout the whole moto. Frossard was eighth, but it wasn't long before Kai Rowley found his way into that eighth place with a few laps to go. But all eyes are on this young kid here in 461, Roman Fevre on the Yamaha, and it was he who took victory from Paula and Bobrashev. Roman Fevre, congratulations. Last round you won your first race. This round you've won your first qualifying race. And you really made it look easy. Yeah, I took the whole shot. So uh, make the way easier for sure. And uh, just, you know, I was riding like the training or something. And uh, yeah, I pulled away like 10 seconds maybe. So it was pretty easy. But yeah, tomorrow it's another day. And uh, we will see. Uh, we need to take a good start. Both moto and we'll be good. Gautier, congratulations. Tell us about the qualifying race. Did you stall on the first lap and then you dropped down and you had you, you had quite a bit of work to do? Yeah, sure. I stalled the bike exactly just right after the finish lane. I just land the, the right foot on the rear brake, so I stalled my bike and uh, lucky that no one landed on me. I actually, I started really quick again and uh, had to, to pass, make the walk again uh, after uh, start, my start was okay. But uh, definitely, you know, I had a good feeling, best lap of the moto and a uh, great feeling on a bike. Can change line and pretty easy. Happy with the HRC um, on that, that the, the, the walks they've made on the bike. So we'll see how it, uh, how the, how different will be the track tomorrow. But uh, definitely have a good feeling on the front of the French crowd. F. Jenny, tell us about your race, third in qualifying. Uh, were you comfortable in third or were you trying to catch uh, Pauline up? Yeah, I was comfortable in second place, really. But I mean, uh, to be honest, I wasn't really comfortable because I, I hadn't, I had any flow on uh, on the track. I was really stiff, so I was fighting with my uh, lines the track, and I was losing the speed in the end. But tomorrow is another day. I get used to do this track because at the, at the, today was difficult, you know. But today, tomorrow, I guess a uh, good start and would be more relaxed on the bike. Then everything would be fine, you know. So you didn't have a good start. Uh, not really, but I went really inside, so I was four. I came to second, and uh, I'm really happy of today. You know, you know, consistent race, and uh, looking forward for tomorrow. Thank you.